So we deal with numbers in mathematics, and what are the rules uh, that determine what we're allowed to do with numbers and what we're not allowed to do with numbers? Well, I think in, when you learn about them in school, those rules are developed as you go along based on intuition or representations of these mathematical ideas. But really, there are, if you get down to it, there are a certain number of basic rules or axioms or postulates that the real numbers follow. And if you do anything other than those rules, you're doing something wrong. And every other thing we, we develop, uh, every shortcut, every um, new theorem, has to be based on these basic axioms. And there are 11 that we're going to discuss in this video. Um, the first five you see on the left, those each have two versions of them, one for addition and one for multiplication. Because all the operations uh, in the real numbers are basically uh, either based on addition or multiplication, uh, maybe some variant of the two. Like exponentiation, for example, is just repeated uh, multiplication. So the first is the closure axioms. It means uh, if there are two real numbers, then their sum is going to be a real number, and their product is going to be a real number. And we read what it says on the right as if a and b are in the real numbers, then a plus b is in the real numbers, in the set of real numbers, and a times b is in the set of real numbers. The commutative, commutative and associative axioms uh, both are involve the order in which we um, do these operations. The first says that if we have two elements, a and b in the real numbers, then a plus b is equal to b plus a, and a times b is equal to b times a. In other words, the order does not matter for those um, elements. Associative, the associative axiom or property, uh, means that if we have three elements of the real numbers, a, b, and c, it doesn't matter which pair uh, in a row we choose to evaluate first. We can choose to evaluate a plus b first, or we can choose to evaluate b plus c first. We can choose to evaluate a times b first, and we can choose to evaluate b times c first. It doesn't matter. And again, this is, this is a proven when we just experiment with numbers in our day-to-day -day life, but this is constructing them from scratch, and we're going to get the same uh, patterns as we usually do in real numbers. The identity axiom is that there exist numbers that leave the result of any operation unchanged. Um, for example, for any number, any real number, a, then we have a number 0, which a plus 0 is equal to a, and there exists a number 1 such that any number times 1 will equal that number. a times 1 is equal to a. So the identities exist. Um, we just call them 0 and 1 because we know that from experience that 0 and 1 are going to be these numbers. Um, so the inverse is related to the identity in which we know that for any number, there is a number that if we um, perform an operation with a number, we'll get back to the identity. So for every a in the real numbers, there exists an x such that a plus x equals 0. That x is, in fact, we're going to call that negative a. And at this point, don't even have in your head uh, what a negative number is. We're de defining it here. It's totally, it totally makes sense in comparison to uh, what you already know about negative numbers. But if you, even if you didn't know anything about negative numbers, you could already form the system based on these axioms. And it's, it also works for multiplication. Uh, if you have uh, any non-zero a in the real numbers, then there exists a number such that a times, oh, I made a mistake there. Um, I'm going to correct it by the time the video actually goes. But a times y is equal to uh, 1. And we call that number uh, 1 over a. Um, lastly, we have the distributive property. And the distributive property is the one major link we have between addition and multiplication. It means that if we multiply a sum of two numbers, let's say in this case b and c, by another number a, that number, that's going to be equivalent to a times b plus a times c. Uh, and by commutativity, you could even flip that and have the A on the other side, and it'll still work. So these are the axioms. If you obey them, then you are doing good by the real numbers. If you don't, something has gone wrong.